think I need Lewis to do that. Only four times was Lewis able to do that. Over 700 plus career victories. This man belongs in the May Smith Hall of Fame. It's also coming out wearing the whole white. Houston in the black. And Houston, the number three team in the nation, wins the tip. Now, Houston has a huge size advantage. You got to look close on the rebounding here today for Houston. And Tulsa has really struggled to rebound the basketball, and Houston is relentless on the offensive glass. Jamal Shedd misses his first shot. That goes off of Sam Griffin. For Houston, the same starting five they have had all season long. Marcus Sasser, Jamal Shedd, Jamon Mark, Jaron Roberts, and Jairus Walker. So important for Tulsa to get some confidence early. The Houston Cougars, when they smell blood in the water, they are so opportunistic. Tulsa's got to be tough early. There's the star freshman, Jairus Walker, out of New Freedom, Pennsylvania. Driving line held by Sterling Gaston Chapman, his first personal. A good crowd here on hand at the Reynolds Center. That's because the number three team in the country is here in Tulsa. Javon Mark gets it inside of the big man. Roberts is fouled at the rim. That is the game plan all night long for Houston. Yeah, you mentioned, John, that Tulsa undersized and not great depth inside. So what does Houston do? They're going to pound it inside. That time that Javon Roberts up strong with that left hand and now goes the line. Houston will physically punish you. When they, when they sense a weakness of any opponent, they go right at your weakness. So we talked to Kellen Sampson today in the shoot around because Kelvin was a little under the weather. We asked him, what's the key to tonight? He said, do we have the fight? We come off of Christmas break. They gave Houston guys three days off, beat their families for the holidays. They want to see how they come out of here, especially it was a two-point win in this building last year against Tulsa. Yeah, it's historically been a tough road trip for Houston here in Tulsa. Frank Haith did a great job here, and Frank always had his team ready. Now Eric Kuckel gets his opportunity for a signature win tonight against the number three team in the country on his home court. If you're wondering if your TV at home is a little smoky, don't adjust it. There's still smoke in this game. That's Brian Labungue for the first one for Tulsa. Uh, Salabunga, one of those big guys that really has to come up big for Eric Kuckel here tonight, and he just did on the first possession of the game. Salabunga, the junior college transfer. Marcus Sasser, he'll line up a three ball short. Rebound goes to Pritchard. If you're a shooter, does this smoke affect your vision out here right now? <laughs> it looks like the old NBA arenas back in the 60s when guys were allowed to smoke inside the building. That's what it looks like. I'm going back to my old Missouri Valley conference days when these two teams used to play against each other. Sasser, his pull up is short. Somebody open the windows in here. Thank you. <laughs> In transition, he's done every six and lays it in. A great start for Tulsa early, and this is the start that this team needed. They've only won four games on the season, and this team is challenged, especially from an athleticism point of view and a depth point of view. Tulsa needs to get off well, and they have so far tonight. John Mark, his shot, nothing but net. And most of the game for Houston. Well, John, we talked in the open about Marcus Sasser as a shot maker. Jamon Mark, another guy that can create his own shot. Mark is the guy who through the shoulder injury was lost all of last season. Mark and Sasser were out. It was amazing what Kelvin Sampson did to just kind of change his lineup, his game plan, and went to the bigger guys. But now he's relying on those two this year. This is Pritchard inside a big man. Sell a with two hands. Uh, Salabonga has been moving to the open space very effectively. That time, unselfish pass inside from Anthony Pritchard. Hometown kid, number 14 in white. We said anything can happen tonight. Yep. Tulsa with a 6-3 early lead here against Houston. Sasser thought about it. Five <laughs> seconds on the shot clock. Extra pass. Here is Sasser from beyond the line. And Sasser, a slow start, 0 for 3 to start this game, but Tulsa throws it away in transition. Houston feels tentative offensively right now. They want to make the extra pass. They're really concentrating on being an assist type of team. But I think tentative, but if anybody is not tentative, it's Salabanga down, down low. And he's just taken right to the rim early in this game.
We've seen slow starts like this before. In the loss against Alabama, Marcus Sasser had a tough shooting night, just 2 of 11 from the floor. They realized they had to rely on each other, and there's Roberts rocking the rim. But nothing tentative about that. Remember, Virginia got an early lead of 9 nothing against Houston, and Houston just started to suck the soul and heart out of the Cavaliers. What do you think that Alabama loss did for this Houston team? It helped them focus on one thing and one thing only, and that's how to be unselfish. Houston was a little selfish in that game. They only had seven assists and 24 baskets. The next three games, they've had 85 baskets, 54 assists. They've gone from 28% to 62%. There's Jared Walker lining up a three off the mark. Brian Celebunga, another rebound. He is second in the conference, averaging eight rebounds a game for Tulsa. There he is underneath, throwing it down again. Somebody's got to find that man. Brian Celebunga speaks English, French, and Songu from Central Africa. I'm not sure what dunk is in Songu. He didn't know what it was either, by the way, because I asked him. We'll just go with dunk. Tulsa with an 8-5 lead over the number three team in the country. Box down the three. Sasser penetrating, stripped, but it goes off to Pritchard. But they say shot clock violation before. Bryant Salamanga. Six attitude, commitment, and class. And that's exactly what Eric Kunkel brings to this program. And I snuck in the locker room and got a picture of that chair. That's the newest one, by the way. Did you get, you get a shape up earlier today? You know what? I, I asked Eric. Back, Eric was a little busy. And with my particular <laughs> hairstyle, it doesn't take long to trim the sides. There you go. I protect everything up top. It's also with an 8-5 lead. All eight of their points coming in the paint. There's the first shot from outside. And the three rolls off the rim. If you're Houston, what's the adjustment here early on down by three? You know, I like their ball movement, but I just think they've been sharing it, oversharing the basketball with the extra pass. First open shot, take your shot like Sasser just did. Get your rhythm that way. Marcus Sasser, leading scorer on this team, averaging 16 points per game as runner goes. It's a one-point lead for Tulsa. You know, John Houston has really worked on sharing the basketball, being unselfish. We talked about that assist, that assist ratio over the last three ball games, but I think they're oversharing right now until that last possession. Host of black jerseys on the rebound there as Walker pulls it away. Now both these teams such an elite three-point defensive team. There's Mark, his three rattles in. First three of the ball game for Houston. They're up 10 to 8. That's the first three of the ball game for either team. Both these teams are ranked in the top six in the country in three-point defensive field goal percentage. You know, this is a great crowd on hand, but a little subdued right now. Team, trying to get into this game right now. It's really the Houston fans make the most noise right now. Well, no students here either. That makes a difference. Sam Griffin, he is the lead now on the scouting report. And a three rattles out for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Betsy, he'll reload his three off the mark, and there's the rebound for Houston. In transition, Jamal Shedd. A tough shooting night so far for both teams. Yeah, both teams have really struggled. First game in conference, a little bit tight maybe, although Houston has certainly enough players who've been through the wars here. But it's different, John. It's different to first out of conference. Everything means a little bit more. There's, every shot means a little bit more. Tulsa 0 for 5 in downtown Houston, 1 for 6 from 3 point range. Getting in the passer lane here, Sasser breaking it up. In transition, and that's going to be a goal turn. And Jerry Walker gazelle like running down the floor. Well, number 25 for Houston is going to be special. He's going to be one of the next great ones here at Houston. So Houston right now on a 7-0 run 
it was interesting when we talked to Jamal Shedd about Jairus Walker. He said Walker's more of a finesse guy at his size, 6'8", 240. He likes to be smooth with it in the paint. And he definitely has an NBA body. He's got that triceratops. I and mean, he's just loaded, front loaded with armor with those big shoulders. B.B. Knight, one of the freshmen, his three off the mark. There's Sasser. Barely grazed the rim on that one. And yeah, Juan Roberts gets him another, another opportunity. Right off the goes. pitch. Emmanuel Sharp. Just like his last name, the sharpshooter nails his first three, and Tulsa calls a timeout. John Tripp and Mark Adams on the call here in Tulsa. Kelvin Sampson and Houston up 15 to 8. All right, Mark, for Christmas, I was in Detroit calling a quick lane ball the day after Christmas. How was your holiday? I know you spent some time with your family. My holiday was absolutely awesome, as it was for the Sampsons and the Kunkels. As those families were able to get together, Saul Monday goes in for the boost right there. There's the Sampson family. And that's Basie Jade right up front there with, with Aunt Lauren and Kylan Ned. Back in the back with old Pat Paul back there, Kelvin Sampson. He's a totally different dude when he crosses the line, by the way. And there's Eric Kunkel, beautiful family, his wife Megan, along with Ethan and Ryan, two wonderful young men. I've got a chance to beat those guys on the beach in Florida one day by chance. Really great family. And then there's the Adams family right there. In transition, his Betson lining up a three ball. And look at that. Tulsa back within two. We got a ball game here in this first half. So we had a lot of fun celebrating the game with the Adams family. Oh, how about your mom, Mark, throwing it down. Well, let's see if Tulsi now can steady this ship, get a good look inside. Salabonga has been available all day. See if they go to again, big number 33. Fought against Roberts as Tim Dalger, the junior out of Fort Dalton, Lauderdale, is fouled. That's uh, Jamal Mark just goes up, avoids the defender. Well, Salabonga goes to take the charge, just gets a little bit out of position, and Jamal Mark just takes it right to the rack. A four-point lead for Houston, under 11 minutes to play here in this first half. It was a 10-0 run by Houston Cougars. But then Tulsa coming out of the timeout and cut down into this lead. Launching a three. Still trying to find their first three of the night. Seems to be a hit one. They're one of eight from downtown is Tulsa. Shed penetrating. The wow. big man didn't see him. Hello and goodbye. A little stutter step. A little stomp action. And then accelerate to the rim. And then it's blocked there by Javier Francis. And Saul Bungay turns his head, and Brandon Betson just gets beat right off the dribble right there. No help as number 33 looks away. Whenever you see a defender look away, that's not going to be good news for the defensive team. So a violation called against Francis. It'll be a delay of game and warning against Houston. Didn't get the inbound enough room. Now watch J.J. Francis, number five there in black for the Cougars. He's got a seven foot five inch wingspan. It's like a condor. And the hook, they're going to call that all day long. Keyshawn Embry Simpson, offensive foul. Yeah, Embry Simpson right there. There's the hook right there. He shot the shoulder pretty well, too. Outstanding officiating for Orlando's pool. Todd Austin. Barat Ramnanan. There's Sharp. Winds up his second three, and he hits it. The freshman, Emmanuel Sharp, out of Tampa, Florida, has two threes for Houston. And he has an elite shooter. Quick stroke. Gets it off. If you're not in his grill, he's going to make shots all night long. Look at Shed on the floor, and he'll stay with Tulsa. But Jamal Shed just shows you that leadership he brings to this team. 
That's the thing when you play Houston. You better come in with a bigger chip on your shoulder than they have on theirs. And they've got a boulder on their shoulder about every night. And Jamal said right here, shedding some skin. First to four wins loose balls. Jamal said was the first to four. Tough shot trying to beat the shot clock. Another good defensive possession for the Cougars. This could get away quick. Trying to establish the post of Francis. A double team. Good pass. Sharp. Three for three from downtown. Houston on a 10 nothing run. In 10 0 run of this first half. How do they open up this 12 point lead? Well, for one thing, Emmanuel Sharp has been knocking down shots. They've been more aggressive offensively, looking for the first opportunity, and they're milking their best shooter right now. Emmanuel Sharp's been on fire, and the Cougars have given him his basketball. Pounding D by Shed forces the turnover. Tulsa does get it back with Andrew Simpson. Ten on the shot clock for the Golden Hurricane, and a foul committed by Sharp off the pass. John Houston's one of the best teams in the country of speeding you up with their half-court defense, how physical they are, how they react, how they rotate. You know, most teams can settle in their half-court offense. It's hard to do that against Houston. Sam Griffin, a contested three. And it goes for Tulsa. Sometimes you just need your best player to make a play. And Sam Griffin's the best player. Leads this team in scoring, averaging 15 points a game for Tulsa. Lead back to single digits. Sasser sheds the screen. What's up, man? He shuffled the feet and travel on one. Uh, Kelvin Sampson's looking at Reggie Cheney right now, probably to come in for Jarris Walker. Oh, going to come in for Javier Francis. Reggie Cheney's a winner. Houston doesn't win the Virginia game without Reggie Cheney. He does so many little things that impact the game. Cheney also a local kid from Tulsa, Oklahoma, the senior in the game of the first time for the Cougars. Pick and roll action. And fouled by Sharp. Bryant Celebunga. He has been a problem inside. He's so, he's so quick off that ball screen action and then steps right to the rim. Watch him explode right there. Long step right there to get the open space. And used to just late. Emmanuel Sharp late with the rotation on the backside. I'm really impressed with this big guy. Really good hands, catches everything. Martin Zigbani was a guy that played here. Really had great hands, finished simple plays. Salabonga could be a similar type low post guy that's just consistent, catches it, finishes, strong. Terrence Arsenal checking in for the first time. Another freshman for Houston. Hey. Salabonga. This is the second. Pulled off the bench, and Arsenal's first shot off the mark. Tipped around, and Tulsa comes away with it. Shed. The covering well pokes it away. Timeout on the floor. Houston with a 25-16 lead under eight minutes to play here in this first half. I'm telling you, it's winning plays. Galen Robinson's so good. I loved Justin Gorman and his brother going the offensive best and elite offensive rebounder. That's how Houston wins with a tough culture. Under eight to play. Tulsa down by nine. Sam Griffin hasn't been able to get going. One of three from the floor. Another deep three, but he nails it. And he stares at the crowd. Sam Griffin starting to heat up for Tulsa.
Yeah, Terrence Arsenault, the freshman who was on ball, gave him a little bit of window to get it off. Kelvin Sampson is going back to Sasser Swift. Tremont Mark right back at you. Three ball of his own. If he makes perimeter shots like that, that adds a whole new dimension to this Houston offense. Griffin with Walker on him. Good D by the big man. Forcing to give it up. Embry Simpson will launch a deep three. Wild shot. And Shed pulls it down. Shed between the legs in transition. Mark. Sam Griffin really hunting his shot. Jarris Walker with mono -y mono Tremont Mark is a guy, when he can get his feet set and go straight up like that, he's a really effective shooter. Find a constructively critical comment about Mark, oftentimes he floats side to side when he's moving side to side on his jump shot. Full season rolls on tomorrow with three more games on ESPN and the app. Syracuse goes off against Minnesota. The bad Boy Mowers Pinstripe Bowl. That's at Yankee Stadium. And our first game at two e in our first game at two Eastern, then Oklahoma will face number 13 Florida State in the Cheated Bowl. And at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, number 20 Texas takes on number 12 Washington in the Valero Alamo Bowl. Another great day of bowl games on the college football schedule. I watched your Mexico State game. Man, they had to turn their season around. First year head coach Jerry Kill has been moving. You know, I'm not used to seeing the Mexico State in a bowl game. That shocked me. This is Jerry Kill. I mean, his, his first bowl game. You guys did a great job on that thing. Appreciate that, man. Jerry Kill. The most respected coaches in college football. Congratulations, New Mexico State Aggies. Jet, dancing with it with a big man on him. Oh, oh, oh. making it look easy. Jamal Shed. Look that Texas two step. Simple but fun. Well, there's nothing easy. Shot clock's at five for Tulsa. Benson, got to get something up with one on the shot clock. Oh! How did he hit that one? That was as good of a defensive possession as you will ever see a team during a 30-second possession. But Benson just made a shot late in the shot clock. So they're checking the clock to make sure Betson got it off. Let's take a look. Yep. That baby's gone. That's a heck of a shot. Brandon Betson, he was a transfer from Chicago State. We talked to Eric Conkle about him. He said, we were going through the portal. We didn't have many shooters. He is a sharp shooter. We are glad to have him in a Tulsa uniform. Well, it certainly paid off right there. He's really quick. He shoots off the bounce well. That's what makes him so effective. Hit two game winners for Chicago State last season. As we approach five minutes, this is just a six-point lead for Houston. Sasser will find Mark behind the back inside. Free throw jumper, pull up Sasser. That's looking smooth. So you see Mark put the ball on the floor, knock down a medium range jump shot. You saw Sasser do it. Jamal Shed can do it. You got guys can bang the three ball and put the ball on the floor and pull up like that. This guy's going like on polo sticks. Poked away by Cheney, and that one's going to be off of Tulsa, forcing the turnover. This is why Reggie Cheney's on my all-tough team. He understands his role, comes off the bench, does his job, 
and just brings uber energy to this team. He's the energy giver. And if you're watching during timeouts, he's constantly on his teammates' backs to get another tip, to get another offensive rebound. He coaches from the sideline as well. Shit. Always in control, patient at the offense. Six seconds on the clock for the Cougars. This is Cheney who will kick it out, but he's fouled on the pass off. These, these are the little things that fans typically don't see, John. Well, Reggie Cheney, that hard cut to the basket, gets the ball in his hands, catches it, makes the extra pass. It's all those little things as to why they beat Virginia. He was a key element to that victory. Another mid-range shot, and it rattles in. Tremont Mark has had a good first half. He's got 12 points to lead the way for Houston. There's that mid-range Pogo jump shot. That time, Tremont Mark. Look at Cheney poking it away again. Sasser will find Mark from the corner, short on the three. Cheney! Who do they call a foul on there? Actually, going to give that on Houston's Cheney, but he's the one who got to the ball first. Reggie Cheney putting on a hustle clinic. First, he comes up with a steal on one end, the extra pass on the opposite end, and then just sells out. Okay, it's a foul. That's a great foul right there. That's not a good foul. That's a great foul. How does he get the foul if he gets to the ball first? Uh, good question. Because the other guy got blown up and it looked like a foul. But you gotta love this guy's motor and how he plays his role. He is so selfless. He's part of this Houston culture. Ten point lead for Houston. This has been a close game throughout this first half. Messiah, that's right. And shit high off the glass. That is where Houston is so dangerous, making your mistakes into points. Off the dribble, Jamal said, Marcus Sasser, Jamal Mark, what, the last eight possessions now have scored off the bounce? Either to the rim or mid-range. Shed called for the bump, bumps his chest, said, I know, my bad, my bad. Jamal Shed, 12 points, 5 of 7 from the floor. And this first unit for Houston, really, they have been together for three years in a row. And that was something Kellen Sampson said has been huge in this development for this team. They know each other, they know where they're supposed to be on the floor, defensively, offensively, and that's why they're clicking right now. And then you can bring those young guys along like Jarris Walker, Arsenal, Xavier Francis. At the race lane and in. Brian Silla, Silla Bungay. He was hot to start this game. Now Silla Bungay is in double figures. He's got 10. Well, he has really found ways to score against this physical team. And now Eric Tucker goes 1-3-1 one, one zone. We expected to see a little bit of this today to throw Houston off their game. Offensive rebound, Houston, another possession. Now that's going to be a problem when you go to that zone. This elite offensive rebounding team, they're going to feast on misses. Shed left open, and he will drain the three ball. Offensive rebound leads to unscripted baskets. Largest lead of the game, Houston up by 13. It's been Yeoman like, hasn't it? Blocked, but a foul is called against Francis, and Celebunga continues to be aggressive offensively for Tulsa. You know, Brian Celebunga and watching this Tulsa team play throughout the, the non conference season, he just finds ways to score. He's just a guy that really understands how to move to open spaces. 
he didn't get to get the, the, the summer workouts like all these guys. Had some immigration issues getting back into the country from Canada. Doesn't look like he's missed many repetitions to me. He's to work on his free throws right now. He's perfect 5 of 5 from the floor, but he's 0 of 4 from the line. Two minutes to play here in this first half. When the ball goes up, watch three white jerseys all go to the offensive glass. That's an offensive foul. Good call. Yeah, Javier Francis just basically sheds the guy, just knocks him down. So Francis is first personal. He will take a seat as Reggie Cheney comes back into the game. Pick and roll poked away by Roberts. Now they reward Roberts, the big man running the break. Mark with the help, got to his spot, but missed the jumper. Look at Roberts staying with it, pokes it away. Houston just everywhere on the court right now. And Juwan Roberts, another motor guy. Number 13 in black tonight. He just gets everywhere, it seems. Cheney's calling for it in the post. They feed the big man. Spinning baseline, and he's going to draw the foul against the freshman, B.B. Knight. Yeah, Cheney knew he had a freshman on his hip, and he was going to make him pay with that quick spin move. That's why he wanted the ball. He understood he had a mismatch. The 15 foul, foul on Tulsa. Sasser, pick and roll with Roberts, and he's going to get hacked on the arm. Call that one on Tim Dalger. That is his first, and that's the sixth on Tulsa. John, some little thing. Juwan Roberts gets the ball poked away, but guess who comes up with it? Juwan Roberts. Under a minute to play here in this first half. Sasser with the pull-up, and he nails it. Marcus Sasser now three of eight from the floor. He's got six. Inside off the hands of the big man, Silabunga. So Houston will call a timeout. 38 eye turnovers. And that Houston defense can just wear you down and they're so quick to the basketball. Now Kelvin Sanson with timeout. Watch for Marcus Sasser. But watch the offensive rebounding of Juwan Roberts and Reggie Cheney as the ball goes up. Sasser got his man in the air. Look at how patient Sasser is on offense. He can't speed up the Houston guards. They're too experienced. Shot clock turned off. Game clock's at 10. Griffin's going to go one-on-one -on -one with Sasser. Pull-up jumper. And Dolger, his finish can't go at the horn. Houston trailed the first half of his first half, but they put together a strong closing 10 minutes. The Cougars take a 43-26 tackle for Tulsa in the first half. Celebunga is a perfect 5-of-5 five five from the floor as a team. Tulsa, 5-of-19. So for both teams, the starters back on the floor to start this second half. And John, the guards, we talked about them being so efficient. Sasser, Shed, Mark are combined 13 for 24 from the floor. Griffin, wild pass. Gaston Chapman was cutting this red ball. Check 
try to get to his big man. And they're going to call a block on Tulsa. Up against Anthony Pritchard. Front of the 6'2 guard from right here in Tulsa. Well, John, for Tulsa, it's really about reestablishing reestablishing yourself here in the second half. They had a, a tough run the last 10 minutes of the first half. Let's see if they can dig a little deeper now and start to chip away at this lead. So quiet here inside the Reynolds Center. And it is almost a packed house. There are so many fans here. No one's really making any noise. Pritchard. Good transition D by the Cougars. That's the challenge. No, no, no. Jairus Walker with the pin. Look at the patience. Jawan Roberts laying it in. A four-point swing. Jairus Walker with the defense on one end. Juwan Roberts with the easy deuce on the opposite end. That's how Houston gets runs. They out hustle you. A wild shot thrown up by Sebunga. To my mark from the elbow. That mid-range game has been so good all night long. Now Houston has a way of taking a dance hall with loud music and lots of people cheering and having fun and turning it into a war. And that's what it is right now in Tulsa. It is definitely silent here in Tulsa. A 12-0 run dating back to that first half. It is ended by Sterling Gaston Chapman. If you're Tulsa, where does the energy come from? How do you bring some life into this building? Well, certainly Sam Griffin's a guy that's been here for a while. And he did get it going offensively for this team in the first half. But Houston just, they take your will away from you. They, they, they steal your heart. They suck out your soul. Tony Bennett in Virginia, where Houston went and won on the road at Virginia. The next game, they're playing Miami. He was concerned about his team because he said Houston took their heart and soul. So the referees stopped play. That's because Tremont Mark is wincing. Appears to be banged up. They're going to get him off the floor. Didn't see what happened. Assassin. Quick trigger, and he is fouled shooting a three. Now, Eric Tuffle doesn't like that call. So, Houston with a big lead right now. The concern right now is for Tremont Mark. Last year missed most of the season with the shoulder injury, but he looked good walking off the floor there. I don't anticipate anything long term. lot of help defense really active especially Juwan Roberts just watch him constantly helping constantly talking Griffin trying to initiate the offense shot clock is down to five Sasser moving the feet staying in front here's Betson blocked from behind a shot clock violation good blocked by Walker remember the first half where Betson made that off balance three-point shot at the end of the shot clock I said that was a perfect defensive possession except for the end that was a perfect defensive possession right there. Third block of the game for Houston. They got a 21-point lead. Walker, that's a deep two. Showing the soft touch. Feathery touch by Jarris Walker.
Griffin. A step back three contested by Sasser. Here's Shed coming away with it. Well, that shot was forced. In transition, back to Sharp. He hit three in that first half. Look who it is again. Jawan Roberts on the offensive glass. Bunch of energy givers in black jerseys tonight. That's the culture of Houston. Extra passes to Griffin from straight away, in and out. Shedden Roberts came running right at him. Sasser, nobody stopped ball, dumps it off. What a pretty assist by Marcus Sasser to Juan Roberts. Houston has opened 24 baskets for 29% of the basket that night was selfish. For the last three games, they've got 85 made field goals, and they've had 64% of those baskets have been assisted. Now, tonight, a little bit under that. 10 assists on 23 baskets, but mainly because the guards have been so good in their mid-range games of taking advantage of mismatches. Here comes the double for Houston. Trapping in the post. Tulsa needs some help. Active hands, and eventually they will call the foul on Walker. So that's our under 16 minute media timeout. I did about the new initiatives here at Tulsa. He loves what the president is doing. His athletic director, Rick Dixon, who is one of the most respected athletic directors in the entire country. That is one of the biggest reasons why Eric Kunkel took this job. He said, we're going to take our lumps here in year one, but they're making strides to make sure that we can be the city's team going forward. Well, and Eric has really connected well with this community. He was connected 20 years ago as a as a student assistant coach under Buzz Peterson. And now gets to come back home of sorts to be the head coach at Tulsa. Did a great job at Law Tech. Six straight years with 20 plus wins or more. Eric Kunkel's the real deal. He said he had friends ask him, you know, you could have completely overhauled this roster. He said, no, I want to respect the kids who are here. I want to make sure some of these kids graduate, get their degree from Tulsa. But he also has some big recruits coming up. This signed a new class, three big recruits coming into Tulsa to try to change the face of this program. Here's Roberts with the runner in the lane. You see the new kids coming in. Jared Hall, the number one recruit in the state of Tennessee. He had offers for SEC. Matt Reed, a guy that offers in the SEC Big Ten, and then you got a junior college player in Williams. Originally had signed with South Carolina out of Hudson. So the future is bright here at Tulsa. And what do all three of those guys have in common? They're all big and physical. And that's exactly what Tulsa needs. In this league, you go up against the DeAndre Williams of the world at Memphis and of course Jess Walker, this big freshman number 25 with his ball in the on his hands right there. Juan Roberts, you better have some big dudes in there. Fake one can compete. Roberts went up and got that with one shoe. He's smiling now as he collects his shoe. That is how aggressive Houston is. They're literally jumping out of their shoes to get offensive rebounds. Yeah, Kelvin Sampson's not gonna get not gonna accept one shoe as an excuse. That's for sure. It's one thing I know for sure. And put it back on, son, go get a rebound. It is 8-5 in the first two first five minutes of this ball game, told it on top, and then Houston has taken in control ever since. Way to say who with Tulsa. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Well, when you're number one in the country and holding people under 50 points a game, you're number one in defensive field goal percentage, where you hold teams under 33%. You're number one from three point percentage at 24%, and you're beating the crap out of teams by 24 points per game. You're pretty doggone good. Will launch his three in and out. Chukwu on the glass and that's blocked. Sharp going one on three. 
And they call him for the charge. I'm sure how that's possible with the Euro step. They call it anyway. Well, let's take a look at it here. First of all, great defense by Javier Francis. And now Sharp on the run. Defender did get his feet set. He did establish defensive guarding position right there. And he's moving back. You can move back, though. He had already established that spot. That's a good call. That was not much contest. 7, 27 point lead for Houston. Big oh! right. Blocked out of bounds. Francis, we playing volleyball or basketball? Javier Francis, seven foot, five inch wingspan with the pterodactyl rejection. That's two dinosaur references in one broadcast. Tonight, by the way. I think you reached that limit. You never know. Sasser wisely pulls it back in transition as Tulsa gets back on D. Pocket pass inside to Francis, and he finishes over Dalbert. I love that kid. He's really, really bouncy. He's like a sponge. He's learning quickly. Watch out for number five in black, Javier Francis. He's going to be the next great big at Houston. Richard with the penetration and his floating goes over Francis that time. Really good touch by Pritchard. Anthony Pritchard playing a much bigger role with all the talent that is lost for Tulsa with the tunnel over the roster here this season. Still an adjustment for this Tulsa team. Sharp. John, you bring up a great point because you've got guys like Pritchard who have an expanded role. Sam Griffin now is really the go-to guy on this team. And all the guys are coming back are expect to play more minutes and be more productive. If you're Eric Conkle, how do you speed up this process to transition to get to where you want to be? Well, for one thing, look, they're doing a great job recruiting. We talked about the bigs they're bringing in, and, and that's going to be a breath of fresh air for this program. But it's really about establishing that culture of having the right kind of an attitude, being committed, showing class. And Eric Kunkel, there's one word that always comes to mind with Eric Kunkel. That's class. I've been with him in a lot of different situations. He's just a great teacher, and he's class all the way. Still coaching hard on the sideline. Sasser. And even up big, Houston Cougars still on the glass as Francis is fouled. Timeout on the floor. Number three points, five rebounds in the win for Johnny Dawkins. Temple, Caleb Battle goes for 18. Aaron McKee gets win number one in conference play. And South Florida's won seven out of their last eight going into Memphis against a team led by Kendrick Davis. And John, this Memphis team is unselfish. This Memphis team is experienced. This is the best Penny Hardaway Memphis team since he's been there. That was a dangerous ball club. And now a hot South Florida goes into Memphis. Tulane at Cincinnati kind of has my attention as well. Two teams pick in the top half to challenge the Houston Cougars and the Memphis Tigers. Great pass. Richard inside, Alex Dollar for the lane. And Anthony Pritchard crafty. Arsenal trying to work one on one against McWright. Finishes through the contact. Terrence Arsenal, freshman on freshman there. Really interesting how they inverted him, putting down the block. That's a low block game. Anthony Pritchard having a pretty good second half, I'd say. And McWright called for the foul as Arsenal was trying to go through underneath the basket. John, you brought up a great point in asking about how does Tulsa get this thing going? What, what, what do you build on? And Anthony Pritchard has come out the second half and shown really high IQ, gutsy type plays, down by a bunch, but it hasn't affected his attitude. Still carrying himself like a champ. That's how you get this, this culture going. 
Francis with the kick out to Arsenal. Ten on the shot clock for Houston. Walker hit on the wrist and he'll be fouled. Walker came here to Houston. McDonald's All-American. And you can see the talent at 6'8. He's got handles. And he's aggressive. He's physically strong. He knows how to use his body. When you look at the freshman at Houston, Jarris Walker, who came in as highly touted NBA body, he wants to be challenged. He is being challenged by Kelvin Sampson. Emmanuel Sharp has such a feathery touch from behind the arc. Javier Francis, another talented freshman. Houston's loaded with experience and young players who are fitting right in right away. Richard trying to get to his spot, a little too strong. Sharp with the rebound. Sharp is getting good minutes here for Houston tonight. He's played 12 minutes off the bench. He's got nine points. Hard to the bucket and one. Emmanuel Sharp, the freshman, quality impact for Houston tonight. Now, this is a guy that shoots 45% from three. And he can put the ball on the floor. And he can take the bump. Holy cow. Is the future bright for Emmanuel Sharp? He's such raw talent. He's learning how to cut and move without the basketball. And once he learns how to do that to get himself free for that three-point shot of his, watch out. This kid's learning how to listen, learning how to play. Keeps getting better. He makes the three-point play. Ramon Walker Jr. checking in the game for the first time for Houston as Sasser gets the breather. Under 10 minutes to play here in this ballgame. Look at Cheney on that hard hedge. Dalgo inside. And he'll be fouled. Jarris Walker, he just picked up his fourth personal foul for Houston. Well, Tim Dowder, one of those guys that comes into this program, really showed good patience on that play. Again, you're looking for little things now. You're looking for things you can build on. Dowder right there, just between two Houston defenders, didn't back down. So with Shed and Sasser on the bench, we got Sharp and Walker running the point for Houston. Walker with his defender on his hip, can't lay it in. Dogger, good D by Cheney going straight up. And still a fun game. He had such a great first half. That's the first time we've called his number all night. That time on a hustle play on a second chance point. Tipped away by Celebungo. Tulsa with the steal. Walker. Dolger, excuse me. Ahead of him. Throwing it down. Sometimes young players act like young players. And Manuel Sharp tried to force the ball inside while telegraphing the pass. Good active hands by Tulsa. Cheney can't finish at the cup. Jarris Walker, the only starter on the floor for Houston right now. Uh, Salabonga was wide open and Griffin just missed it. That would have been a dunk. Sharp tips that one away. It'll stay with Tulsa. As Dewan Roberts will check back into the game, replacing Walker. And Kelvin Sampson right now is building depth. He's going to ride these youngins for a while on the perimeter. They're going to make a few mistakes, but you got to build depth to make a run in the NCAA tournament. This team could win the national championship. Griffin, step back. 
on the baseline, just rattles out. And a tough shooting night for Griffin. Two of nine from the floor. He's got eight. Roberts backing down his man. Here's pump fake, creating the separation. Roberts on the left-hand side. Four black jerseys went to the right. They completely cleared it out for Juwan Roberts. Dalgar is three off the mark. And that'll be off of Walker, so close the ball. A timeout on the floor. Houston up by a 30-piece. This is what they've done in the calendar year. Memphis feels disrespected. They've got a big chip on their shoulder. They, they have wins against four SEC teams this season. I had them against Ole Miss. They were very, very impressive. And then UCF is trending up with wins over Oklahoma State, Florida State, Ole Miss, and then win again tonight. And Johnny Dawkins and that bunch led by Darius Johnson. They go into Houston this weekend. That's a big opportunity for a three-bid league. Because UCF right now, would they be in? No. But with wins over UCF, over Memphis and or Houston as we see Henry Simpson knocking down the jump shot Memphis UCF could position themselves for a third bid in this league but they got to win some big games against Houston and Memphis to get there Sharp touch shot Roberts there on the spot finds Cheney and gets a free pass to the rim Houston, even with this big lead, they are still playing tough. John, we got Cincinnati and Tulane. Kind of, who do you like kind of as a dark horse? You follow this league, you cover this league so well. Who do you kind of like as maybe the fourth team outside of that three that I talked about? A foul at the rim. People aren't talking about Tulane. Yeah. Tulane's another one of those teams. I got them against Memphis oh, on New Year's Day. Tulane is always a dangerous team who can make a run in the league. Well, they've gotten so much better. I mean, that was a program that was basically 300 back then in the RPI. Now, of course, it's the net. But Ron Hunter has that team just incrementally getting better every single year. Jalen Forbes, Jalen Cook, two dynamic offensive threats. Of course, Ron Hunter does bring a little bit of flair, you would say, to that Tulane program. Great dancer, by the way. Best dancing head coach in the conference. He's got some call. <laughs> Attitudinally, he's the best dancer in the conference. He sells out. He ain't the prettiest dancer, but he dances every day at Central. Salabongo hits his first free throw of the game. One for six from the line. Yeah, he's under 50% for the year. That'll be a key thing for him to get better at as Tulsa moves through the season. Because he is good offensively. you got to have him on the floor. Sharp call for the offensive foul. Sharp, that is his fourth personal. Yeah, two of those are offensive fouls. And, you know, you gotta love the fact that he wants contact and he's taking the ball strong to the rim. He's just gotta learn how to two foot jump stop on occasion. Steal by Cheney, under six minutes to play in this ball game. And John Cincinnati, another team that I think has the ability to rise their game as well. On Roberts inside, Victor Lock in the big, the big tip for Cincinnati has just been tremendous for West Miller in the Bearcats. No putting Eric Conkle, still coaching his guys hard from the sideline. Justin Chapman, his jumper off the mark. Sky and high, Terrence Arsenal. Well, John, we knew that this was going to be a, a, an uphill climb for Tulsa this evening, but Eric Puckett put it best. He goes, you know what? I'm, I'm just crazy enough to think we can win this thing, and my players have to believe and be just as crazy as me. 
It's not going to happen tonight, but it will happen. Arsenal in transition. They call it a three. His foot was close to the line. That's one they're going to look for here. Just a complete performance by Houston tonight. The starters and the reserves. Yeah, and credit Houston for that lunch pail work, blue collar type of basketball. And that travels well. Just ask Virginia how well it travels. A third personal foul on Cheney. Points off of turnovers tonight. Houston's winning that battle 22 to 2. That's why Houston is so hard to prepare for because of the unscripted stuff. Look, you can prepare for their offense, their half court sets, but it's the unscripted opportunities they present by getting offensive rebounds, by diving on the floor for loose balls, by getting deflections. It's hard to reenact that in practice if you're an opponent. Wasn't it fun watching Kellen Sampson earlier today? Man, he looked around. like he's ready to take over as a head coach somewhere. Yeah. Kellen was, Sampson definitely knows what he is doing, working behind his father and Kelvin. Yeah, there was a point where one of the Cougars on the scout team looked like they walked and everybody stopped, which is not acceptable in the, in the Kelvin or Kellen Sampson culture. He put him on the line. You don't stop. You don't stop till the official blows the whistle. And everybody got on the line and started running. Heard a lot of contact here. Yeah. I guess they're just not calling fouls anymore. Under four minutes to play. Houston. Five players. This is a really balanced, hard team to prepare for. Opening night here in the American is going well for the number three team in the country, the Houston Cougars. That's a tough fall away. Right in. He's hit two of the toughest shots of the night against this defense. One on the right hand wing on a three point shot, and then that one. Arsenal said, I see you step back and give you another. He's just a puppy. Eventually, he's going to grow into another junkyard dog. Still playing lockdown D with a huge lead. Shot clock's at three. Gaston Chapman just throwing it up. And an over the back foul is called. Emmanuel Sharp. They get in good position, he is fouled. John, just watching that defensive possession, you pointed out with Javier Francis how he locked down a Tulsa perimeter player by just athletically moving his feet. I'm telling you, Javier Francis, if I'm picking for an for outdoor five on five game out in the parking lot, my first choice of anybody on this floor, I'm picking him. I think he's got the best upside. Especially if I can keep that team for about another five years together. He's always got his knees bent. He's always playing hard. He's always listening. I love that kid. And your Sharks put together a good game as well. Four of seven from the field. He's got 14 points for the Cougars off the bench. Yep. And an offensive foul called against McWright. Well, we knew coming into this one it was going to be a tough matchup for Tulsa. They didn't have the size. They were going to have to knock down a bunch of threes. And it hasn't been their night shooting 20% from downtown. Yeah. Never really got that going. Well, remember, this, this Houston team is elite in defending the three-point line. Holding teams to 24% from behind the arc. And tonight is just another example of that. Ryan Elvin 
Getting a round of applause goes the scores table, getting set to check in. Arsenal banks it in off the glass. Help D is there by Francis. Another rejection. And here's Ryan Elvin. Works so hard in practice. Does everything this coaching staff asks of him. And here he is getting time with 208 to play in this ballgame. You know, lost his dad a couple years ago, but Ryan Elvin just the, the ultimate team player for the Houston Cougars. Good player, too. He could play a lot of places. Two minutes to play in the ballgame. The Houston fans in attendance, you know what they want. They want Ryan <laughs> Elvin to put the shot here. Yep. Arsenal with the penetration. And the three goes. Reggie Chaney, excuse me, foot was on the line. They call out a two. What impressed you the most about this performance by Houston tonight? I think just the, the way that it came to them in such a, a, a workmanlike fashion. Going on the road, look, it's not easy to beat anybody. But to go on the road and win this convincingly in the opening night of conference play, look, Paul's has challenged us from a, from a talent perspective. But to, to take care of business the way Houston has, that's what's impressed me the most. Charles Chukwu, who committed to the previous staff, goes to the free throw line for Tulsa. And this is the front end. What a catch. Walker sets the feet. The big question mark for Houston coming into the night. How would they respond coming off of Christmas break for three days off? A tough place to play. Everybody I talked to on the roster said that they don't know what it is about this building. But Tulsa always plays them tough. But Houston answered a dominant performance. Yeah, whatever demons did to be exercised in this building tonight, those demons have ran out the door. Cheney filling the lane with the lay-in. And Javier Francis with the assist. Arsenal with the steal. Ryan Elvin time. Ryan Elvin's in the there corner. Take that shot, young man. They give it back to him. It's Ryan Elvin time. Here's Cheney setting the screen for him. Elvin for three. <laughs> That'd be the loudest this crowd's been tonight. You now that's how much Ryan Elvin has loved. Everybody on that Houston bench was calling for Ryan Elvin to get the basketball. It's pretty hard to sit for two hours and then go in and warm it up and knock it down, but he's a really good shooter. Final 10 seconds here at Tulsa. Houston overcame an early deficit. They used 10, 2, 10 nothing runs in that first half. Eventually, blew it open. Our final score, number three, Houston winning it, 89 to 50 over Tulsa. Well, concerned. About